By the 1600s, the greatly overpopulated, tiny and ancient city had become far too crowded. Many iron mills, 80,000 people burning coal to warm their wooden houses, many wharfs and boathouses, textile factories and the streets were made of mud. Between 1603 to 1646, over 100,000 people died of the Yashinia pestis bacterium which persisted to remain in the city for over 100 years, known as the bubonic plague. Coincidentally and conveniently, between 1665 and 1666, over 100,000 people died again of bacterium within a year, known as the Great Plague, where a third of the city's people died and almost the entire city was ravaged in a week-long fire, started by an agent of Rome, Robert Hubert, who was later convicted and hanged of the crime for starting the fire, which was called the Great Fire of London and destroyed 80% of the original city. During the week of the fire, Parliament made the Sescu QV Act of 1666 law, which presumed everyone in the country was dead, and from then on, they presume everyone is dead, incompetent, and lost at sea. Basically, we are corporate slaves controlled by the Crown and have no rights. Following the devastation, Christopher Wren designed the lavish streets for the very high quality buildings, 50 churches, banks, grand palaces and many important buildings that we still see today. Notice earlier how I said coincidentally and conveniently because it took London from an overpopulated slum uh, built on wharfs and boathouses and trade and commerce to the most powerful square on the planet still today which controls commerce, trade and the world's money supply. 50% of the entire world's money runs through the city of London in means of derivatives which is spread out between the tax havens.